Hi everyone. Um, so a few days ago I asked on Instagram uh, on my story for a few questions for for two for two. I asked some questions. So a few. No. <laughs> You're right there, Fred. So uh, oh right, I'm just gonna start again. <laughs> Hi everyone. So a few days ago I asked on my Instagram story for some questions that you'd be interested in seeing my mum answer from like her perspective. Um, so we're gonna do a little Q&A today. Beans. So this first one is from Courtney. She's a fan page for Max and Harvey and me. Oh yes, yes. Um, when you first found out Evie had tics slash Tourette's, how did you deal and adjust to it as a family? We crumbled. No, we didn't. <laughs> well, I guess the official diagnosis came quite a while after your tics had started anyway, so it wasn't a sudden, uh, a sudden diagnosis that we got a massive shock about. We kind of already knew what was going on. It was just putting a name to it, wasn't it? Beans. And there wasn't really a huge adjustment because, yeah, a lot of things had been happening for a long time anyway with your tics and your seizures and because they'd already had well us as a family had already had so many problems thrown at us with my health and mental health that we were sort of used <laughs> to anything new that came along what's she gonna do next <laughs> how do you feel when my Tourette's hits you like that <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm used to it. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I'm not a robot. Sometimes I sort of think, ow, <laughs> that hurt. Because sometimes I do, you're quite strong. Especially when you punch, when you do those at the top, like that. I shouldn't have suggested uh, that. They hurt. So my first thought is, that really hurt. Just, it's not your fault, is it? You can't do anything about it. So it's just a kind of... It's yeah, annoying oh. because mum bruises like a peach. So <laughs> literally any tiny thing hurts her. Mm. I feel like I'm being really boring. No, you're not. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you think that I could live alone? Not that I would ever want to. I think it would be better for you if you didn't. Your, um, you have a better sort of state of mind when you're with people, sort of jogging you along. I don't think you... Mentally you're in a better place with other people, aren't you? Yeah. Although you are socially anxious with big crowds of people, you do need people around to be okay. I wouldn't be safe on me. Well, no, that's the other thing Postman Pat! Postman Pat! Fuck off with your black and white cat. <laughs> you, because you have your seizures and your tick attacks, it kind of, it wouldn't be safe for you to live alone anyway, would it? No. I already know though that if I did live on my own, my paranoia would just spike yeah, well, that's right what up. I mean, you need other people around to kind of keep you in a good place. Yeah. Okay, this is a good question. <laughs> Do you get annoyed when I grab your tits? <laughs> Slightly, yes. <laughs> it's more surprise than anything else. But it is a bit annoying at times. Beans. It's not so much my boobs when you grab other things. Fanny. Yes. <laughs> Especially when you say fanny grab at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> How did you react when I had my first tick attack to, you know, when we were by the river? Well, we didn't realise what it was. You just suddenly said, I've got all this energy, I don't know what to do with it. And you couldn't even walk, could you? You were ticking so badly. We sat down so, on a rock for a while. Yeah, that was worrying. But the fact that you were saying funny things that you couldn't help. We were, we were laughing a lot, weren't we? Because it was spontaneous and funny. But we didn't realise at the time that it was the beginning of your tics becoming much more severe. Or maybe we wouldn't have laughed so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, not we. You were terrible. Well, it was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, she wasn't terrible, but she oh, was. No. She was. Out she was me wonderful, on but she was <laughs> apt, like wetting herself laughing because that was when I shouted, "Hey, a fisherman!" And now if I did that, it's like, that's quite mild compared to the things I shout at people now, isn't it? It was just such a shock that you'd kind of done it, I suppose. Beans. Because even though you'd had tics before that and vocal tics, they hadn't been directed at other people so much and so spontaneous as that. Yeah. Is it scary watching your child have a tic attack? Much love. Yes, it 
is very scary. Especially the ones where you can't... You know you like it. I can't, don't. But especially the ones where you can't catch your breath or where you're sort of hurting yourself. Like the punching one, when you're punching the walls and stuff. Um, Beans. And the breathing one's horrible. Yeah, I don't like those. <laughs> but actually, sort of your bad tick attacks aren't as frightening as your bad seizures, I don't think. For, f I mean, for you, <clears throat> you you're out of it in a seizure so you don't you're not aware of it but for us when you have a really bad seizure it's uh, more worrying than when you have a, a tick attack is that because i'm unconscious yeah kind of but also <whistles> at least in a tick attack you can tell us what you need and you can tell us how you are and yeah that's true and during a seizure we <whistles> we don't know how you're going to be and how you're going to come out of it and when you're going to come out of it Whereas during a tick attack, we've still got that communication going mm -mm, and, mm -mm, mm -mm, and that makes it easier in a way. Beans, were you worried about me having a Tourette's diagnosis and they put in brackets like the stigma around Tourette's and stuff like that? No, not really. Beans, no. you, you already had, well, like I said before, you already had the ticks and the movements. You know, you had all your vocal ticks and your motor ticks and it was just putting a name to it really. Yeah, so the diagnosis, the diagnosis was just a label. Wasn't. Yeah, it's just a label. And... The only thing that worried me was knowing that if they did tell me I have Tourette's, which I sort of kind of knew, but yeah, wasn't really thinking real about it too much. Didn't we? But the only thing I was worried about if they said, um, yeah, we're going to diagnose you with Tourette's, was that I knew that if it was just like a tick disorder, it could be treated and the ticks could eventually just like completely go away. Whereas if it's Tourette's, it's something that you have your whole life. That was something mm. that worried me. It didn't change anything for, for me particularly. I don't sort of think of you as, now you've got Tourette's, you're still Evie. You just happen to have Tourette's now. Ah! Willy. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> someone just put Willy in the question box. Oh, that's nice, thank you for that contribution. Um. <laughs> Okay, this one is addressed to you. So what do you do when you are overwhelmed or tired or need like, because it is hard work having a child with disabilities. And it, although it's tiring for me, it's almost equally as tiring for you. So what do you do to look after uh, yourself? So, <laughs> yeah, go to bed, <laughs> sleep. Have a gin. <laughs> D. Talk to other people, like other people, the support groups and stuff. There's a good one on um, on Facebook. Your man. Go to a quiet place like my room. <laughs> you, you never exactly need time away from me. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need time away from you, Kesh. Not exactly. Sometimes when you're like late on a night when I'm really tired and your Tourette's is winding yourself up and zooming around, that can be a bit like, right, go to bed now, Pesh, I need a bit of space. Yeah, take your medication now. <laughs> but I don't need time away from you, no, never. <laughs> What's the worst part of Tourette's? I would say for both of us, it would be the injuries, like the harmful stuff. Yeah. Oh, cheeky. Well, also, how it's kind of affected your your life. You know, and the fact that you've had to give up your oh yeah, mm -hmm. what you wanted to do that you wanted to become a teaching mm -hmm. assistant. Mm -hmm. It's hard for for me to see that it's affected your future in a way that upsets you. Next question. Okay, I like this one. This one wasn't in the questions box, it was actually a message. Um, so Nikki says, I love the way she hugged you during your absence seizures in the pancake video. I'd like to know what else your mum does to help you get through. There's a kind of, like a procedure to it all, if you like, a routine, in that when she goes into a seizure, the first thing that we do is make sure she's safe, in a safe place. Um, then we would start timing it, put our timer on. Um, Beans. Sometimes we'll record it if it's something that's a little bit different. Yeah. If there's maybe a new 
um, symptom in there or something that she's doing during the seizure that's unusual. We'll record it for a neurologist um, and then we'll just stay with her. Sometimes there's other things like if there's a light on near, we put it off because it can be quite painful on her eyes. Um, if she's sort of a little bit in a seizure but not completely, we would maybe put some of her favourite music on. Get, get a bear popcorn if she asks for it. Yeah, because there's like different levels of seizures. Yeah. Sometimes I can communicate with you and sometimes I can't. Beans. Yeah. Beans. Back when you didn't know what was wrong, what went through your mind? Well, with your tics in the beginning we thought was part of your FND, didn't we? Yeah, and with the hiccups when I was, that started when I, I was 12. I have no idea what was going on with your hiccups. I just thought you had a weird... Diaphragm? Weird stomachy <laughs> thing going on. Yeah. I don't know, I just thought you might grow out of it. But then Beans. as you got older and your mental health kind of took a dip, didn't it? So it was it was kind of clear that some things were related to that. Mm, 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 mm. And that so we kind of linked those two. But then when you were diagnosed with your FND, I think we put mm. maybe a lot more down to that than we should have. <laughs> like your tics and things. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. we just wrote all of them off as part of your FND, didn't we? And not Tourette's, which once we realised <laughs> that the your tics were more than just FND, it kind of made sense. So when did you first start thinking that maybe I had Tourette's and it wasn't just FND tics? Probably last May when you had that really big tick attack. That's when I, that's when I fought as well. Yeah. Literally yeah. that, during that tick attack yeah. is when I fought. Like there's a certain criteria for Tourette's. Um, yeah, well I mean at that time you were, you were, it was affecting your walking, it was oh, affecting, oh. you know, you were, your arms and your legs were all doing things that, my yeah. neck as well. Yeah, and you, you were blinking a lot. And then when you sort of spontaneously started to shout things out more than you had been before, and it started to be observational and... It... Yeah, it did occur to us then, this isn't just a tick disorder. This could be Tourette's. I don't think you actually remember this, but if you do, how did you feel when you found out my hiccups were ticks? Because I remember being told, but I don't think you do. It was in 2016. Well, there was a stage that we thought your hiccups were kind of seizures, like little seizures, almost. It was part of a seizure. Really? Yeah, when the doctors kind of, before you, it was diagnosed as a tick, there was a sort of thought that maybe it was linked to your seizures when you started having them. Sure. Do you ever think that a tick isn't a tick? So a lot of people ask, how can you... How can you tell whether it's just me messing about or whether it's my Tourette? It's very rare that I don't know when it's a tick because... You know me like the back of your hands. <laughs> your wrinkly hand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are wrinkly, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so if you go back and listen to Evie's tick just then, there's usually a, um, a motor tick that goes alongside it so a head will move in a different way or our hands. It usually but goes it, back like that. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. But also <laughs> her tone of voice changes. Tick, tick, tick. So it'll be either a bit lower or a <laughs> bit higher, or um, it'll be at a different pace. Generally, she speaks quicker uh, during a tick. And you just can you just can recognise it when you've seen it a lot. Are you a full-time carer for me or do you work? I do not work. Um, I am a carer for Evie now, yes. Beans! No, it became obvious a few a couple of years ago that Evie um, needed me more than I was able to give her while I was still working part time. So, um, as a family, we made the decision that that was going to have to be something that happened. And that's uh, how we've been ever since, isn't it? As much as I feel guilty about it, which I know I shouldn't. Guilty, is there? I know I shouldn't, but it was one of the best things that we could have done. Yes, it was. We couldn't have carried on the way we were. It was it was a decision that was sort of made for us, really, wasn't it? But it's it's worked out well. How are you always so calm when I have seizures or tick attacks? Beans. Well, there's not much point in being any other way. So <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be very helpful. I guess because some parents they get a bit frantic, but I guess you're used to it. And also, it's just in your lovely nature. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's just. I mean, I was a teaching assistant for a long time and dealt with a lot of first aid Beans. emergencies and stuff. And to me, when you're having a any kind of something going on, you need me to be calm. There's absolutely no point in me 
being frantic and losing my head over something because it doesn't help you, does it? Where's your head? <laughs> Lost it. Sometimes afterwards I can be a bit kind of shaken, especially if it's been something really bad and need a bit of time to... A bit shaken up. A bit to sort of de-stress from it, but during the actual time, um, you just, just got to get on with it and keep you safe. <laughs> okay, I like this question. <laughs> As a parent... Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> how do you handle the ticks of the more sexual nature <laughs> just words isn't it funny beans They're just beans. words you're still a gorgeous person inside and out and just the fact that you say you know funny and dick a lot and other things it doesn't mean anything it's just a word what's it like at meal times there's a few things that we've had to put in place now yeah so beans. sometimes we have to cover the table with a mat because he um, likes to gouge bits out the table with a fork We've got a lovely um, wooden table, yeah. which I've now left it's got many marks on. <laughs> and also um, people beside me, because I sit there and my dad sits here. And usually when I finish my dinner, I'm not like <laughs> focused on anything. So my hands aren't busy anymore. And so usually when my dad's eating, I go like this. When he's like trying to hold his fork and I'm like this. <laughs> and like all the food falls off his fork. So, but we were dad. But everyone is just so nice about it. They just take it so well. Ow! Oh! Right. Did you catch yourself? Oh, be careful. <laughs> what else at meal times? Well, you need a water bottle, don't you, rather than a glass. Yeah. So sometimes at meal times, there's food thrown around. Yeah, we usually have to clean the walls up and stuff like that. Teddy tends to help as well. He clears stuff up for On us. On the floor, clean. yeah. A lot of the questions were very similar, so I've sort of narrowed it down a bit. Mm -hmm. So for, for other parents watching this who might have a child or multiple children with Tourette's, how can they best support them? Find out about Tourette's as much as you can. Look at Tourette's Action, lots of information on there. Um, just lots of patience and understanding and a good sense of humour. Yeah. It's essential. <laughs> And don't sweat the small stuff, because it doesn't really matter. It's all part of life's rich tapestry, as they say. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Who says that? People. They. They, them. Yeah. What's your pronouns? She, Fuck her. Off. What's yours? Twat. Twatted. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the questions answered. You were, you were very good, thank you. You're welcome, my love. Hopefully that this video will help a few people. <laughs> Don't subscribe. <laughs>